Hello there, book club. I've got a great one for you today. This is The Last Murder at the End of the World by the glorious Stuart Turton. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. How this book is only averaging a 3.69 stars on Goodreads is beyond me. It is a travesty, honestly. My usual rule is that if a book has a Goodreads rating of below 3.7, I skip it. Hard stop. I took a chance on this one because I'm such a fan of Seven and a Half Deaths and The Devil in Dark Water. Holy cow, I'm so glad I did. Stuart Turton, I hope you read this or see this book review. Um, don't let the haters get you down. The Last Murder at the End of the World was excellent. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn, Evelyn Hardcastle was a happy surprise if you've read it. It's like Groundhog Day plus Quantum Leap plus Agatha Christie. And if you haven't read it, you need to. And then The Devil in Dark Waters, this, his second book. They're not related. They're two independent stories. But anyway, um, it was another Devil in, Dark, in the Dark Waters, another closed door mystery. And it was a winner too. His first two books were so good, in fact, that when I learned that Stuart Turgeon's third effort would be another closed door murder mystery, this time set in a dystopian future with the last of humanity trapped on a remote island, I accidentally took the danger, I accidentally let in that dangerous emotion we book lovers live for and dread for with equal measure. Anticipation. I know, I know. Anticipation has been the no, has been, has been known to kill dreams of book lovers uh, and book nerds everywhere. No matter how powerful your commitment to not letting it in, it sneaks into the cracks and lodges in your guts and grows until it gets what it wants the next book because obviously it's going to be just as good as your expectations. Well, either that or it's going to crumble under the weight of uh, your overweight <laughs> expectations and, you know, kill your dreams. So did it? Did the last murder at the end of the world kill my dreams? Absolutely not. There is so much to love for fans of whodunit stories. There are actually two mysteries to solve this time. How did humanity's last hope end up on an island surrounded by flesh-eating fog and who did the killing and why? The murders are foreshadowed in chapter one. The mysterious pile, the mysteries pile up quickly and I just loved collecting the clues and trying to figure out the secrets. Now, the stakes get higher as the pages turn and by the climax, I was glued to the pages. I still couldn't figure out how all the pieces fit. And then when it was finally revealed, I was so glad to be perfectly surprised. One more thought about the rating. Several folks didn't love that the voices seemed to flow from first person to third person. I don't think that's the intent. If you read it, you'll discover that there's a character called Abby, who is an AI voice inside of the head of each person on the island. Abby is the narrator of the story. So when Abby is referring to herself, she says, I, I did this. And then in the course of her narration of the story, when she's describing the actions of others, she says he, she, or they. So I can see how it would be, might be a little disconcerting from switching what seems to be first person to third person, but that's not what's happening. It's just simply Abby is an omniscient narrator, and sometimes she's talking about herself, and other times she's talking about the language. So anyway, that's easy peasy. There's no language concerns. It's pretty intense. There is some violence. No other adult content. This dad says the last murder at the end of the world is best for 16 and up. You're gonna love it. If you haven't read other Stuart Turton books, do it. Don't wait anymore. Happy reading, everyone.